Well, we've had our drink, a large pint of Pepsi Max, oh that's convenient, green man straight on. And we're going to be crossing over now for the next part of our journey, which is down Balaam Street to the Black Lion Pub. So, you're going to be joining me for that one. I'll just point you up a minute so I don't point the phone in people's face. This is where the post office used to be. It's moved right to that one at the end just there now. That's where the music shop used to be and I can't remember the name of it. My dad will. Took me in there a couple of times when I was a little kid. And I'm talking really little kid. It's the old uh, job centre, which is Simba Cars, PCO Car Rental, East London Business and Skills Consortium. And as I say, the Swan is now a barber's. And that's where we've just come from, the, the Abbey. Looking very nice. They painted it recently and it does look nice. If you want to go into a proper friendly pub, really lovely people in there bop into the abbey you won't be disappointed old jewelers that's been taken over by newer people now but it's still a jeweler's shop a local legend coming up here on the corner uncle jim's fish bar they've been there for years and years and they do a lovely bit of fish and chips cod row uh, the kebabs are really nice in there, I like their kebabs. Nice, but their garlic sauce, which they make themselves, is very, very nice. So yeah, that's Balaam Street so far. I've just got a nip into this shop to collect some laminated pictures. And you'll be joining me again on the outside. So I'll pause you for a sec. Off we go. That's it. <coughs> Collected those. And we are now off. They're a small gift for St John's Church at Stratford because they've been very obliging with allowing me to film and photograph to get permission and whatnot first. They don't normally allow filming. I did have to tell a wee little fib and say that some ancestors had connections to the church, but they may have done, they may have gone there. No, it was mostly like the history page stuff. Once they know it was a, not some obviously little oik. And the uh, bloke who's I've been in contact with, I assume he's the vicar, seems a nice enough fella. He's checked out my page and liked it, so welcome to. Thank you for joining. And he uh, watched the coronation video, you know, the ones with the drawings and portraits in it. And it was a case of, like, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. He wanted a couple of images, or one image, of his church, the outside. Well, he's got several David and Jenny excelled themselves with black and white images and whatnot. But yeah, this is Balaam Street Swimming Bars and it's been closed for a few years now. And uh, yeah, rumours is it's going to be built on. So knocked down and will become luxury flats with shops underneath, apparently. So whether that's true or not, I don't know. Okay. We're off this way. This is Helping Hands where the monks live. This is one of the oldest buildings on Balaam Street. It's an old Georgian townhouse and there was lots of them along here but most of them blown up in the war. And they do a lot of good work in the area. So, Whitwell Road there, just there, and the church of St Andrew and St Philip's, or St Philip's and St Andrew's, I'm not sure which way it is. Anyone that remembers Balaam Street well will remember that Panatelli's garage was once here. This was the laundriette, but it's been converted into little houses or apartments, whatever you want to call, call them. Balaam Street, yeah, this one was where Panatelli's garage was. The taxi garage, you know the black taxis? It's a black taxi garage, that was. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, there's a lot of changes down on our journey some old bits and bobs that we'll see as well so that's all right I had a nice chat in the pub two lovely ladies just telling them about the history and whatnot and that of it I'll get some some of it printed out for them because apparently a few people ask so more people, more in recent years, have become 
much more interested in the local history. We're going to cross over in a sec because there's a bus stop with people that I should be able to avoid, hopefully. Cross over. Yeah. Well, the road's clear. Yeah. It's a bus stop there, and they've got kids with them, and that so. These garages here, they're going to be pulled down as well soon, apparently. And, of course, flats and whatnot go up. But looking back down Balaam Street from whence we have come. I am smoking, but no, it's not in a cemetery today, so... No one can moan about that. Unless, of course, you're adverse to people smoking in the street. Lydon Road this way. Grange Road that way. And we're straight off down Balaam Street. This is Grange Road. I did show a bit of that with the changes and whatnot. How different it is in one of my videos recently, Lost, Lost Pubs of London, where the Sultan was. And if I can get some help on the name with this one, what we're going to see soon, another Lost Pub, I'll have that as my... Uh, third feature piece for Lost Pubs of London. So I've got one that's halfway between Plaster and Stratford. The what was the Victoria Cross Tavern in Manor Park, which is now completely gone and is going to be built on. But there's some family connections to that one for me because my nan used to go in there regularly. She weren't a heavy drinker, she used to go in for the breakfasts each morning and uh, a little glass of Baileys. They did lovely garlic mushrooms. But the reason it was called the Victoria Tavern, Tavern is because um, Jack Cornwell, VC. He was uh, from Manor Park and they named the tavern after the Victoria Cross medal that he won. And they had some of his memorabilia and bits and bobs in there. Uh, a replica medal, some pictures of him and that. The pub's completely gone now. That house over there is known as the Posh House, but the lady, the old people that lived there, I'm told, are really nice. Not that Posh people aren't nice, but you know what I mean, don't you? It's quite a large house for the area and it's always well kept. This is Dongola Road South, I believe taken down the street sign. That's the old doctor's surgery there for anyone that remembers or still visits the area. And we're going to be coming up to the site of our second lost pub. And if anyone can help me with the name of it, I'll be really grateful. It's bugging the life out of me. It was one, that one I told you about that was empty for quite some years and me and my mates when we was teens went into it a couple of times so they didn't board and seal everything up with metal plates and whatnot in those days I mean you merely had to climb over the back wall of it from the park and you could just walk straight in through the door which someone had obviously opened but or left open because it didn't even look like it had been booted in or whatnot things were different I mean it's not a long time ago and I'm not an old man but things were really different back then. This is called Burke Lodge and these were the masonettes. They've, they're still there, the old original stuff in amongst this, but it's had a, a big, big upgrade with a new level put on top for these, what they call skylight apartments. And now we're going to be coming up to the site of the lost pub that I want you to help me with. And it's really bugging me because I went in it several times I thought it was called the Hare and Hound, but that's not, that's further up this way, and it's, the building's still there, but it's not a pub. But I don't know what this one was called. It's Making Connections, Bernardo's, 
but on this site was an old Victorian pub that was quite similar to the Abbey Arms one right next to the park and opposite what was Balaam, um, Simon's Pet Shop so if you can help me with the name drop on that one please I'd appreciate that so look, I can find photos of it and do a then and now on it but this was um, Simon's Pet Shop and then once he went it became Scales and Tails and it's been closed for some years now but they've done it up and it looks as though they've sold part of the shop off because this bit was part of it so and that's a vape CBD shisha and drinks now what this one's going to become I don't know what was Simon's Balaam Street Park and it's fairly empty in there today so we'll have a little wander around the water fountain as it's nice just over here there used to be like an old uh, a business like a warehouse kind of thing and I can't remember what the name name of him was because this was some years ago when I was quite young but he sold everything to do with hardware and DIY and stuff like that and when it was when I was a teen we had a drill that belonged to my granddad a light grey coloured metal drill it was donkey's years old but it was a brilliant drill probably the best drill we've ever had anyway we lost the chuck key to it and couldn't none of the modern ones would fit so my dad said I'll go over to whatever this bloke's name was or over here he said he'll have it and he did indeed have the bit we need or needed the drill broke some years ago I've still kept it because it was my granddad's but yeah that's where the little business used to be just there it was taken down some years ago something's happened because there's been two police vans a plane closed and an ambulance go flying down this way so yeah Bollum Street Park or Plasto Park and if you get a minicab in this area the minicab driver will call Bollum Street Bollum Street and they're usually very friendly the local ones so I don't mind that so we'll have a we'll have a wee scoot around where the water fountain is and then we'll go back out on ourselves but yeah where we got into this pub that used to be there was through the back here there was a wall that was partially knocked down or coming down by the, by that time so it wasn't a difficult task to get into it and then once you went into there it was like a little outbuilding at the back and the door was open and you went into the door and then there was another door that led you into the pub so yeah if anyone can help with the name and I really wish to God that we'd had the type of technology available to us then what we've got now what I'm holding in my hand now because me and my mates went on a few good adventures and it would have been nice to have a record of them because the buildings are mostly gone now. Uh, a lot of bits over the docks. Um, this pub here. There was uh, along the Barking Road an abandoned house, another mate uh, called Ricky Wynn and me who went into that one. It was a shop below and like little flat things above. Along the Barking Road, right opposite near where McDonald's is, but in the old place is there and it was empty for about a year or two it's called his grace's hair and beauty salon now and it is no longer empty florentinia the pigeon kind of work in the water fountain we shall now go back out I was reading online the other day that London is the only city in the world to have the most parks and green spaces. What they call green spaces now, I just call it a park. But yeah, we've got the most in the world, which is nice. Because when you do stop and look and walk around some of our parks, they are nice. Little havens in amongst all this concrete jungle stuff, it's nice. I'll be doing uh, Valentine's Parks when the weather turns really nice. And uh, what's the other one? It's one on the way, Plashet Park. Plashet Grove Park. It's probably got, got another name, but we, are, we just know it's Plashet Park. So yeah, that's our last little goodbye of Bowling Street Park. I don't know if that's changed very much in your time, or since your time, the last time you've been here. 
I'm going to go back out into Balaam Street now. Right over here is Howard's Road, where many a Plastovian was born in the old maternity hospital at Howard's Road. So that would be a familiar spot for many of you. Many of you would have started your lives there, including my eldest sister. Sister. I don't know what they've done with modern tobacco, but it continually goes out if you like you roll your own. Here's Howard's Road, and as I say, the it was a maternity hospital, but it's an ambulance station now. So, yeah. This was the Hare and Hand, I believe, which was a, a nice old pub. The building's still here, of course. Still has some of its original features. But it's called Kate's Caff now. Ah, oh, and it's open. Fucking hell. I was just going to say to you, that all the times I've been by, it's never been open, and it is open. But when you go by, what I can usually smell a lot is bread pudding and for someone that loves bread pudding is very nice this old building here when you know the sugar factory Tate and Lowell's many years ago they were two separate business Tate's and Lowell's and one of them was here I can't remember I think it was Lyle's that was here one of them was here and then they merged and went to Silvertown which was late Victorian period, early 20th century. Yeah, this is the building that they were in originally, one of them, before it became Tate and Lowell's. And it's now a mosque, I believe. Called the Plasto Jamia is Labia, yeah. But yeah, it was originally um, part of the Tate and Lowell sugar factory before they can like can conjoined. That was that. And our oldest building in Plasto is going to be coming up at the end of the road on the left. But it's also the most interesting. I'm just going to point you this way a minute because someone's crossing over. It's the most interesting one. Georgianera. And it's had a new frontage put on it many years ago to sorry to bring kind of bring it up to scratch or modernize it but the house we're going to see is a georgian era house and the person that lived in it was known as dr dodd or the reverend john dodd or dodds and he was a 18th century clergyman who forged a check by adding a few extra zeros on it um, it was an awful lot of money in those days, which, when you were caught and found guilty, forgery and whatnot back then, was a hanging offence. And the Reverend, or Dr John Dodd, or Dodds, he hanged for it, and the house we're going to have a look at in a minute, which is this one here, was his house. And we'll be coming up to another lost pub of London in a sec. But it looks like they're having work done on the buildings, so. It's another little interesting local tale as well, which I'll tell you in a sec. Once we've covered Dr. Dodd's house, which is this house here. The Reverend, or Dr. John Dodd, or Dodds, he lived in this house, he forged to check late 18th century and he was hanged for forgery um, I think this was a dental practice for many years and then I don't know what it's used for now uh, yeah, I think it could be ha no it's not housing because it's got a waiting room and it might still be a dental practice someone said to me that they think it's a clinic for STDs but I think they were on the wind up Right, Coach and Horses, another old pub which is just there. As you can see it's got all scaffolding up now so it's going to have something done with it, I don't know what. 
but this building just here was a seafood shop and the bloke that owned it this was when I was younger teens um, he won the lottery a really big big win on the lottery he closed the shop someone said he bought the coach and horses as well he closed them both down and they've never been open since and when I say these have been empty for years I mean years 10 or more years particularly the seafood shop so it'll be interesting to see what's going to happen with them because the scaffolding's up so we'll see and we're going to cross over I'll have to point you up a minute I'm just going to pause you there we are we've crossed over that's the coach and horses and we'll be seeing what happens with that soon so it's to watch this space but we're now we're heading off to our second location which is the Black Lion pub which is basically really Plasto's oldest building I would say because this pub uh, there's been a pub on the site for over 600 years but this pub it was built in the 1740s round about the same era when the first pub that stood where the Abbey Arms was built 1740s and like the Abbey Arms they would have been coaching inns and the Black Lion was a coaching inn it's had a new frontage in the Victorian era um, as I say it's built from the 1740s but I was reading online that when they rebuilt they reused uh, quite a few of the materials from the old pub like beams and things like that and I've already been in and filmed and you can see that they did do that so yeah really old beams in the pub um, and that's where we're off to now let's point you up a minute because someone's coming along that's it but these masonettes here uh, one of the lovely page members lived in these years ago so they're still going strong but here's our next location Black Lion Pub And a seafood stall there, look. So anyone that wants a bit of seafood, get yourself over there. And here we are, Black Lion. This is our second location for the day. As I say, this structure dates mostly from the 1740s. Its oldest part of it is this, which you can see there, still with its garret. And when we get on the other side into the beer garden, you'll see the slight higgledy-piggledy shape of the roof. Like the Prospect of Whitby, which is a much, much older pub than it actually looks, they were refronted. Uh, Prospect of Whitby and this one, both given new frontages in the Victorian era. Yeah. Zoom you out, that's it, it's better. Yeah, this is the Black Lion, and through there used to be the old Black Lion boxing gym, but that's gone now, I'm afraid. And yeah, this is our location for the day, so join me inside for a another drink of Pepsi Max, I should imagine. <laughs> Take care all, and see you on the inside of this one if you want a nice tour of it. Take care, see you all soon.